What's up guys, Justin here with the sketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the most powerful tools for bending objects along complex paths. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you a practical example of how you can use Shape Bender in your SketchUp modeling. All right, so Shape Bender is one of the most powerful tools for bending things when you have a set path. And so you can access Shape Bender by going into the SketchUp extension warehouse and just searching for Shape Bender. And so when you do that, there's a tool in here called CLF Shape Bender. It's actually not listed as being compatible with SketchUp 2024, um, but it's still working in SketchUp 2024. Um, and so you just want to install that, and then you want to make sure that it's enabled in your extension manager. And when you do that, you'll get a little menu that looks like this. And my menus are not resizing to match just like single icons. Um, I'm not sure why. I think that's just a SketchUp thing maybe with some of these older versions. But um, anyway, so the way that this tool works is you give it geometry that you want it to bend, you give it a base line, and then you give it a target line. Now what's really important for this tool and the only way it's going to work is if your base line is placed along the red axis or running in the red direction. It doesn't have to be directly on the red axis, but if you draw a line that's going this way, it's not going to work. It's only going to work this way if you draw a line this way. And so basically the way that it works is I've got my geometry that I want to bend and I'm going to place it on this line. It doesn't have to be directly on the line. We'll talk more about that in a second. But then when you activate this tool, what it's going to do is if you don't have a component selected, it's going to tell you to select a component or a group. And so I'm going to take this group. This isn't going to work on raw geometry, by the way. The geometry has to be grouped. But I'm going to select this and then I can pick my base point or my base line in here just by clicking. And note that the actual point where you click in here to select this can be a little bit funky. So sometimes you have to click around a little bit in order to get to recognize the line. But then you mouse over your target line right here and you click and notice what that's going to do is that's going to give you a preview the preview is going to show you how this is going to bend this object and so notice how it's basically taking this object it's slicing it up by the number of segments in the curve and then when you hit the enter key it's going to have bent that object and if you look at the hidden geometry in here you can see that the hidden edges in here align with the um, segments of the line right here. Now, what that means is that means, say that you have a line over here that has more segments. So this one had like 12 segments, this one has 48. So if we do the same thing, so I'm just going to select this, click on our baseline right here, and note that the selection point is at like the middle of the cursor. Um, but then I can click again. Well, notice how this is gonna do the same thing and you can kind of see those target slices in here on this object, it's going to slice it up based on the number of segments in the curve. So more segments in curve equals more slices. And then if I hit the enter key, it's going to create this. So now let's get into some more specific details on how we can use this. So first off, um, one thing you need to be aware of is the distance of your object from your line is going to make a difference in the way this is placed. So in this case, I've got this rectangle right here, but notice how it's off of this line a little bit. So it's off of this line, but that means that when this object, or when it bends the object along this curve, that bent object is going to be off of the line as well. So it kind of retains that distance from that edge in here. So if you're trying to be super precise, um, then you may wanna make sure that you've drawn this directly on this line. And so this is one thing it's worth noting. So right now what it's doing is it's taking the object and notice how the word start shows up in here and the word finish shows up in here or end shows up in here. So it's saying that this side of the object is the start and this side is the finish. But then notice how it's reversed on this object. That means that this is showing up on the other side. Well, you can flip that by tapping the up arrow key. When you tap the up arrow key, notice what it's going to do is it's going to swap the start and the end in here so that it's bending in the proper direction and it stays on the proper side right here like this. So now if I hit enter, notice how it bends this object, but it maintains the distance 
from the target line right here um, in the placement of the object. And this works on the uh, in the other direction too. So this one, for example, is on the inside of this edge. Well, if I click on this and then click on this, notice how this one, and I'm gonna tap the up arrow key again, notice how this one is placing it on the other side right here. Now, one issue that you may run into um, is when you run this, you may get a result that looks like this, right? right here. And then if you tap the up arrow key, you don't get anything right either way. Um, that's because you need to tap the down arrow key. And so I'm not 100% clear on this one um, because it looks like it toggles the start and the end of the line that you're using, but it doesn't give you a very good result either way. So if you ever get this like weird result where it's not really bending it, just tap the down arrow key before you hit enter and then it should place it in here properly like this. And so, so now let's take a look at some three-dimensional geometry in here. And one of the reasons that I want you to look at this is because I want you to think about this from how your segments are going to affect the way things are bent in here. Now, if you look at this, this has 12 segments in it, right? But our piece of glass only has one, two, three, four, five pieces of glass in it. And so if I run this, Notice what it's going to do is it's going to bend this multiple times across my piece of glass. And so that's fine if you're not trying to be super precise with your glass, right? But notice how that causes some issues in here with some triangulation. But more I'm worried about the fact that it's actually bending this frame. Um, and that's probably not how you would build this because you don't really do a whole lot of like actually curved glass, right? But if we were to come in here and we were to set this edge up so that it has five segments, which is the number of pieces of glass that we have in here, and we want to make sure that we put all of this in a group right here, but we're going to go ahead, we're going to run this right here. We'll mouse over this edge and click. And then if I hit the enter key, notice how where it's dividing this, you're still getting some triangulation in here like this, but it's much closer to actually dividing this along the edges that you would need in here like this. So um, sometimes it's worth taking a look at the way that you're, or the number of segments in the shape that you're bending, because you can use that in order to set the result that you're going to get in the 3D space. And so one thing to pay attention to when you're doing this is the object that you're bending is going to get expanded or contracted to fill the length of this curve, right? So in this case, for example, I've got an edge over here that's nine foot, nine inches, plus or minus, but then over here, if I look at this overall curve, what happened is this is like a 17 foot, 10 inch curve. And so what that means is that means that if I run shape bender, I'm going to toggle my hidden geometry off. But if I run shape bender on this, what it's going to do is it'll bend the object. But what it's going to do is it's going to distort it right? Because what it did is it took this object and it stretched it in order to fit the entire length of the edge right here. So it's basically taking this object, slicing it up into an equal number of objects, and then it's making them fit along this curve right here. Well, that's problematic because I really want to keep kind of the same size of these panels in here. And so what I usually recommend is figuring out the length of your overall curve, right? So this one again is going to be 17 foot, 10 and a quarter, and then modeling your object to be that length. So in this case, this has been modeled to be 17 foot, 10 and a quarter, right? It's modeled to meet the entire length of the curve right here. Well, that means if I run this, so if I select this right here and then I select this one, notice how that's going to fit nicely along the curve right like this and you're not going to get any distortion. So modeling your target line to match the length of your curved line is a good idea and it's going to help you keep these kind of like expected results as opposed to this like really stretched out result that we have right here. Okay, so now I want to look at a practical example. So say that we have a stair right here and we want to bend it along this surface. Well, what I have is I have a cylinder in here. And if I hide the cylinder, what I've done is I've just cut this in half right here. So I've split it in half right here. And then I've got shape bender set up with a stair over here and an edge. And I've deliberately set this up a little bit wrong just so we can look at how you might fix what this is going to do. So if we were to select this stair, activate shape bender and click on this line. So we're going to find the line. Then we'll click on this one. 
right here. So first off, it does a great job with the stair, right? So I'm going to tap the up arrow key in order to split the or uh, flip the direction, hit the enter key. So that's going to take that stair and it's going to bend it along this surface. But the problem is we actually have two problems. So the first problem is if I go into a top down view right here and then I unhide my cylinder. So I'm going to do an unhide all. Notice how first off, this is like halfway through um, the cylinder, which is not what we want. Well, the reason why is because we drew this with this kind of straddling this line. You can see it in the middle right here. So what you want is you actually want the stair to be over on the side of it so that it's bent along the outside of the curve right here. The other thing is notice how this is kind of extending beyond um, the edge right here. So some of that has to do with just the way that we have this in here, but some of it has to do with the fact that the stair is actually extending beyond this edge right here. So let's take this and let's rerun it over here and let's fix that. So the first thing we want to do is we don't want this centered on the edge anymore. What we want instead is we want the edge of our bounding box to be on this end right here. So notice how this is outside of this line. The other thing we want to do is we want to scale this in just a little bit so that we can make sure that our bounding box is not extending beyond this edge. So we're just going to move this over. We're going to find this point right here. So now if we look at this from a top-down view, and I toggle X-ray mode on, so our target edge is going to extend to the edge right here and to the edge right here, and this is on the outside of that. Well, now if I take this, and I don't know why, this one, when I run it again, it doesn't show me the preview. So we just have to kind of like look at the inputs. But when I run this, so we're going to run it here, run it here, like this. Notice how you want to make sure that your starts and ends are aligned. So you can see how over here this says start, which is not what we want. So we want to tap the up arrow key so that we know that we've got the start over here. Well, now if we hit the enter key and we bend this, notice what that's going to do is that's going to bend that along this object. But if we go to a top down view and uh, turn on our parallel projection, you can see how this is bent along the outside of the object right here, and it stops at the end. So you can use this in order to really quickly bend an object along a surface like this. Now, one thing I will note about Shape Bender is if you need this to be a perfect 180 degree bend, like this is great for something that isn't 180 degrees. If you need this to be a perfect 180 degree bend, there's an extension from TomTom called True Bend that can do that. So you can go into the extension warehouse right here. And by the way, I've got a free extensions guide that you can download that gives you a ton of information about SketchUp extensions. But TrueBend, I think it's one word actually, when you run it. And so TrueBend lets you take an object and enter a radius like this. And so notice how this gives you a smoother edge along this side when you bend this. So if you are bending along like 180, 360 degrees and you don't want any distortion, you can use true bend instead. Um, but this is still a really powerful use for um, this is still a really powerful use for shape bender. And then one last thing that I wanted to note is everything we've talked about up to this point is bending things kind of flat along this direction, you can adjust your target line. Um, so this one, for example, is running vertical rather than horizontal. And so what I could do is I could group these objects like this, select the line, and then select this one. And notice how it'll bend it in a vertical direction as well, like this. So if I hit the enter key, notice how it came in here and it bent this along this path. And so you can use this in order to bend things along vertical paths as well. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to get started with Shape Bender. Let me know how you're using it in the comments down below. Um, if you do want more information about SketchUp extensions, I will link, link to my free extensions guide on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.